Ladies and gentlemen, questers of the queer and uncanny, tonight's tale of terror is unique in being one of the first interactive horror stories ever broadcast. To appreciate it fully, we therefore request you find a blank cassette and record this program. Well, go on then. Run off and get one. <laughs> and whilst they're doing that, my assistants, Anthrax and Snuff, will treat those of you still listening on crystal sets to yet another in their series of strange speciality acts. <laughs> Gentlemen, we proudly present Sawing Snuff in Half. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> With a cassette, are we good? I don't feel very well, Dr. Tally Dally. <laughs> Place it in the machine and press the record button then. Can I go home, please? And prepare yourself for another tale from the cabaret of Dr. Caligari. <laughs> Greetings, explorers of the insane and inexplicable. And welcome once more to my theater of cruelty. A venue where the vile and villainous are forced to strut their sinful stuff for your inspection and instruction. It's not fair! <laughs> Silence, Snuff! Well, she never said she was going to leave me, son, in half like this. <laughs> what am I good for now? Bookend! Okay. <laughs> Tell her, Doctor, she's starting on me. That's enough from both of you. Anthrax, stop picking on him and snuff. Pull yourself together. I'll try, Doctor. <laughs> You're lucky you can't see this, you know, listeners. It does rather defy description, doesn't it? How is that? Excellent. And so much more of a challenge when you go to the toilet. You what? <laughs> no! Me bottom's on backwards! I <laughs> tell me a top half round, will ye? Too late for that now, my mixed-up minion. I sense that this week's guest is almost upon us. But I'll have to sit on my wallet. Silence! Anatomical abnormalities. Our star act is poised at our portals. To the shadows with you. Lurk. 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 And enter. Hello? Hello? Anyone at home? That's funny. Could have sworn I heard music and a chainsaw. Mercifully, not a combination often found on the variety stage. <laughs> oh. You nearly gave me a fright, then. I do apologise. Don't. You nearly gave me a fright, but you didn't. Oh. I mean, don't you think the cape, the corpse complexion, makeup, and the hunchback assistants are all a bit of a cliche these days? A cliche? What are you, Rocky Horror Show fans? Demons from the torture pit of Hades, actually. Well, I don't think I've seen that one. Don't worry, you won't. <laughs> mm, right. You know, this building really is something special. You couldn't find a dump this decrepit if you built it yourself. It's exactly the kind of location I've been looking for. Location? Then uh, would I be right in assuming that I have the honor of addressing a filmmaker? Well, video maker, really. And retailer, I own a shop. And me and some of my friends have a company that knocks out horror films as a sideline. Quick, cheap, straight to tape and straight out on the shelves. Here, have a business card. Toby Ramiro. My friends call me Tobe. We'll call you Romero, then. <laughs> and what exactly is your next film project to be, Mr. Romero? A noirish study of the paranoid nature of the urban nightmare as experienced by sexually oppressed adolescents. Nothing cool. The great pubescent girls in their nightdresses massacre. Classy. Two. Nice. 
And this place is exactly what I need as my main location. Maybe with that thing there. My name is Snuff. Nice name. Dad, I love the backwards walk. <laughs> what is he, double jointed or something? <laughs> well, however he does it, I think we can use it. Let's forget the story and do him in right now. Not yet, Snuff. There is a correct procedure for everything, and the tale must be told. The tale? Mr. Romero. Toad. Toad. I wonder. Would you be so good as to join me in the spotlight? Why? Simply a little invitation we extend to all our guests. What do you mean? I wasn't invited here. I was just walking by. Were you? Of course I was. That, that light. It, it's so bright. And also revealing. See the way it catches the hidden facets in my ring. Your ring? My ring. Look at the ring. <sighs> you know, sometimes I think it'd be a lot quicker just to beat the truth out of them. The ring. Are you sure you were just walking by? So bright. Were you walking or were you running? I... I was running. They were after me. All of them, after me. And when you saw my door... I ran in and... forgot. Tell us about it, Mr. Romero. Tell us Tell all, us all about, about it. it. Tell us all about it in a tale we entitle... Teenage Psycho Chainsaw Bimbos. <laughs> was dead. You thought you were safe. Well, he is and you're not. Demented Desmond, the demon dermatologist, returns in St. Michaelmas Thursday, part 12. And this time, it's all terribly familiar. Why don't you say we get a bunch of kids together and go up to the old haunted house by the cemetery to listen to rock and roll records and have sex? Sounds really awesome, Roxanne. I'll invite Chuck and Patty and Buck and Maddie, and we won't tell anyone we're going so they don't come looking for us if we get into any kind of psychopath-related trouble. Thirteen teenagers went into the house of horror that fateful night. Thirteen teenagers, of which only fourteen returned. From the director of I Dismember You and Cannibal Picnic. Well, what did you think, Carrie? Did it make you want to see more? Made me think I'd seen it all before. It's a sequel. It's exactly the same as the last one. But what about the atmosphere, the air of unease, the sense of lurking terror? It's like that round the back of Tesco's. We filmed it round the back of Tesco's. Look, can we stop watching videos and get on with the stock take, Mr Romero? Ew. You only employ me till eight, and I want to be out of here before any of those creepy filmmaking friends of yours turn up. They are not creepy, Carrie. The stock take, Mr Romero. The stock take, Carrie. Shelf 5, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Parts 1 to 6. Check. The Evil Dead, The Evil Dead 2, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, What the Living Dead Did Next. All present and decomposing, sir. Friday the 13th, April the 1st, Halloween. Doesn't the year fly by when you're having a good time? I drink your blood, I eat your flesh, I spit on your grave, I throw up in your toilet. Are you sure you're supposed to be stocking some of these? I oh, want to be a censor as well now, do we, Carrie? Well, no. Yeah, right. The next shelf, then. Slayer, slasher, slicer, dicer. Grumpy, sneezy, dot. Look, I think we've had enough of the sarcastic comments now. Remember who the employer is here, will you? I'll try, Mr Romero, sir. 10,000 maniacs, cannibal holocaust, driller killer, I fought yuppie zombies from hell, Kylie Minogue in cotton... 
Harry, how did that get in there? It's pretty nasty, Mr Romero. Can't you take anything seriously? I don't expect my staff to share my interests, Carrie, but I do expect them to respect them. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Mr Romero, but there's no way I can dig up any kind of respect for Cannibal Holocaust. I've seen good horror films and I've seen crap. And this shop seems to be in the sewage business. Oh, if you don't like it, Carrie, you know what you can do. Yes, I do, Mr Romero. Carrie, where are you going? Out that door and back into the real world, Mr Romero. But the shop doesn't close till... Evening, Gail. Evening, Mrs Carpenter. We have a complaint. Really? I've just found a cure for mine. I've quit. Bye. Carrie! Uh, <clears throat> How did you enjoy the tape I recommended last night, Mrs. Carpenter? Mrs. Carpenter? Hello? She's been like that since the first disemboweling. The one with the rotary mower. Her mouth fell open, her false teeth fell out, and she hasn't said a word since. Yes, it's a classic. I gargle with your pancreas. You didn't tell her it was horror film. You said it was wild life. You won't find life much wilder than that, Gail. She's in a state of shock now. What am I supposed to do? It's pension day tomorrow. Me and Brian rely on her cheque. Um, well, look... Take this home and show it to her. Blood-sucking freaks? Yeah, that should shock her back out of it. And if it doesn't? Then I might be able to do a deal with some filmmakers I know. They're shooting a remake of Psycho. She'd be great as Norman Bates' mother. (laughs) Women have got no sense of humour, have they, Damien? No. Fancy you saying that, and her not even cracking a smile. Didn't get the reference, I suppose. Still, shame about Carrie. Why, did you fancy her? Yeah, she would have made a great victim. I'd have loved to have filmed her naked and covered in cheap centrails. (laughs) Pause it, pause it, look at that. You know... There is something quite profoundly beautiful about the arc of blood from a severed jugular. You need a good freeze frame to fully appreciate that. The miracle of video, Damien. The liberation of the viewer from the tyranny of the filmmaker. Now we can fast forward through the plot. Time wasting dialogue. Rewind and rewatch. Freeze frame and savour. And re edit for ourselves. Re edit? I have a secret to share with you, Damien. A little project of my own. Care to attend the premiere? Try and stop me. Then pass me that video cassette. Which one? Next to the severed head and the rubber machete. This one? That's my baby. Franken's tape. <laughs> I'll be stitching it together at night when the shop's closed. Clipping the choice cuts from every horror tape in stock into a single living hole. Every slice and slash and slow, slow dismemberment is in there. Watch. <laughs> But there's no story, no context, no characterization. Just endless slaying of scantily clad teenagers by homicidal maniacs with power tools. Exactly. You do me a copy. Well, oh, I fell asleep. <laughs> Watching the tape for the third time lulled me right off. Funny how soothing the sound of agonised screaming can be, eh, hey, Damien? Damien? Yeah, he must have gone off home when I dropped off. <clears throat> yeah, what's the time? Oh, no, it's gone three. Way past all good gorehounds bedtimes. Or just... What was that? Oh, that's what it was. 
Is that you, Damien? Stop playing, silly buggers. If you're trying to frighten me, it just won't... Oh, you bastard, Damien. You must have left the front door open when you left. There's someone in the shop and I'm stuck in the back room. Yeah, where's that rubber machete? <laughs> now, look. Whoever's out there, I warn you. I'm armed and I'll know how to take care of myself. There's... There's no one there. That's impossible. There's no way you could have gone to. Unless I imagined you. Unless you were never there at all. Well, that settles it. No more late night screenings for me. And no long, lonely walks home along dark streets either. Oh, I'm bedding down in the back room. I'll bolt the door just to be on the safe side. And I'll stop talking to myself as well, first sign of madness. Mind you, I could have sworn I saw... Saw... Saw? So my, my name is Roxanne and this is my friend Roxanne. Hi. We're both from California, you know, and we've come all the way from the US of A to kill you in like some totally gross out manner. <laughs> but why? I, I don't even know you. What have I done? You watched this die, dude. You watched this die like how many times, Roxanne? Like an awesome amount of times, Roxanne. You sat back and watched this get sliced and diced and dismembered with all kinds of totally uncool implements. And you didn't leave me left a finger to help, dude. You just watched. And rewound. And watched again. Like that's really sick city, you know. You could have said, don't go in the old dark house. You could have shouted, stick together and stay out of the cellar. You could have told us to avoid going out on any calendar date with a commemorative significance. But no, guy, you wanted to see us die. You were an accessory to the mess. And now, you don't even remember who we are. I do. You're the bimbos. The bimbos in the films. We were those bimbos, dude. And now we're the ghosts of those bimbos, and we're really pissed with you. Rip it up, Roxanne. You got it, Roxanne. Oh, I've got a machete. It's made of rubber, nerd. And now it's only a machete. Looks like it's kick out time, Toby. So why don't you just lie back and be a good little donor? The next five seconds of the cabaret of Dr. Caligari are potentially offensive and have been omitted to remind listeners that for good or evil, censorship is not a paranoid fantasy, but a part of everyday life. We now return you to the surprise ending. Oh, it was all a dream. I've still got all my faculties, and I'm back in the back room of the shop, and it's morning. Hmm. Maybe Mary Whitehouse was right after all. That video was nasty. Perhaps I should see the error of my ways, turn over a new leaf, and in future, only stock films that feature good, wholesome family viewing. Mind you, I'd make a fortune if I could tape and sell a nightmare like that. And where's me pen? I'd better write it down before I forget. What was that? That's what I thought it was. I don't believe it. There is someone in the shop. Who's there? I warn you, whoever you are, I've been through hell once tonight already. And if there is someone out there, I'm going to put you through it too. Oh, if I get older, you are... <laughs> oh, you daft sod. It's the post. It's copies of Dodgy Video Dealer Monthly coming through the letterbox. Good morning, Posty. 
You had me going for a minute there. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Romero. The bundle broke open, so I was just sticking these magazines through your letterbox one by one. <laughs> but now that you've opened the door, I can stick them through your heart. <laughs> Get off me, Ghostie. What do you think you're doing? Special delivery, Mr. Romero. I'm sending you to hell. <laughs> just when you thought you had woken up. Where's that voice coming from? Nightmare 2. This time it's for real. Get off me! Go on, get out! You all remains a maniac! I'm calling the police! You hear that? I'm calling the police! Christ, he's got into the shop! Mr. Romero? Mr. Romero, are you in? Gail! Mrs. Carpenter! Oh, thank God it's you! Has the postman gone? How did you get in? Mother wanted to return your tapes first thing this morning. She found them very stimulating. Mrs. Carpenter, put your zimmer frame back on the floor, you'll fall over. No, she won't, but I think you will. Who fitted those flick knives into your zimmer frame, Mrs. Carpenter? They're not national health issue. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm still asleep, aren't I? This is all a dream within a dream. In that case, why are you bleeding? I'm not bleeding. Oh, oh I'm. You're lucky I was passing by, Mr. Romero. I'm a doctor, and I can see you need urgent attention. No, no, oh, put that scalpel Come down. On, and boy. perhaps we should look at his teeth while we're at it. I'm a dentist. The say ah. Diner Rob here, sir. We've come to do your dream. <laughs> Host, to Mr. Romero. Special delivery. Ah! You need oh, to help me. God, you came by. I'm stuck in this nightmare and I can't wake up. But I thought you'd like your city. My city? The city you built with your films. Oh, it's a bit grim, I'll admit. But I'm sure that once you've explored its blood-soaked streets a little, you'll feel right at home. But it can't be like this everywhere. There has to be some way out. Then why don't we split up and search the place? Choose a direction, any direction. They all lead to a nasty end. But sometime this all has to stop. Nightmares always end. Films have to finish. Until the sequel. Wait a minute. This is all another trick. You're driving me round in circles. Stop the cab. Let me out. Whatever you want, Mr. Romero. It's your city. You have to live with it. <laughs> Catch you later, Mr. Romero. I think. I've got to figure a way out of this before another gang of deranged dentists and psychotic postmen spot me. There. That old abandoned theatre. Yeah, I'll hide in there until I work this thing out. Ah, good. The door's not locked. Just badly boarded up. And I'm in. If I stay here till... Wait a minute. I know this place. I've been here once already tonight. But this is where the old damn nightmare started. Here, behind these doors. Welcome back to the cabaret of Dr. Caligari, Mr. Romero. I thought your act was dead good. And now we'd like an encore. What's wrong with feeling? <laughs> you can't make me go through that again. Wanna bet? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, the last time I came in here, I didn't remember what had happened outside. This time, I do remember. And you won't trick me into going back again. Yeah. 
I've broken the circle. I've beaten you. You may recall a speech you made earlier <laughs> in praise of the power of the video cassette recorder, Mr. Romero. And we quote. <laughs> Now we can fast forward through the plot. And time wasting dialogue. Rewind and rewatch. Freeze frame and savor. Unquote. Ahem. Earlier this evening, I took the liberty of asking our small but select band of home listeners to find a spare audio cassette and record tonight's tale of torment. By now, <laughs> they will have captured every word. Every wind. Every wounding with sharp objects. On ferric tape. Now ye are the masters of your feet. And every time they choose to play that tape. You will have to go through the whole damn thing again. And 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 again. For all eternity. Or until each and every one of them relents and grants the final mercy of taping over you. No! No way, take our word! And so, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, if you would be so good as place your finger on the required button, it is time for Mr. Romero to be rewound! <laughs> And now, you may play. It looks like it's about time, Tony. So why don't you just lie back and be a good little donor? You may play. That's the trouble with radio these days. <laughs> Nothing but repeats. <laughs> you have been listening to the cabaret of Dr. Caligari, another experiment in audience endurance by Alan Gilby. It featured John Woodvine as Dr. Caligari, Victoria Wicks as Anthrax, Sylvester McCoy as Snuff. In Teenage Psycho Chainsaw Bimbos, you heard Stephen Tompkinson as Tobe Romero, Cassie McFarlane as Carrie, Jane Whittenshaw as Gail, Clarence Smith as The Postman, and me, Andrew Bailey, as Damien. Other parts, bimbos and assorted psychopaths, were played by the cast. It was directed by Anne Edivine. Oh, yeah. Turn on next week for another portion of Poetic Justice, when Lord Denning is forced to walk home late at night, still dressed in his wig and gown, in a tale we entitled Asking for It. <laughs>